it's dumb it's dumb to to how well you play i think uh wesley's has a good enough squad to come out of that group and i think um getting the the points from from papua new guinea and uh uganda okay. early then will set you up for winning you know against new zealand and afghanistan <laughs> Well, let's look at Shumar Joseph. I think he's the X Factor. He burst onto the scene with his performance in the test matches in Australia. And he's shown that he's capable of taking wickets. Shemran Hetmayer. Yes, I think uh, some people were surprised by his selection. But I think that his performance uh, in the early part in India, I think his performances have... And we know his ability have led to him being drafted into the squad. Hello and welcome to At The Wicket, the pulse of cricket, where every swing, spin and score is captured and dissected. I am your host, Kamali Arnold, with guest Raja Harper, bringing you the inside edge on cricket. hottest topic. Today we'll be looking at West Indies' recent squad selection for the ICC T20 Men's World Cup. The high stakes, three tournament, three match series against South Africa, and sizing up the competition in Group C. So grab your gear and let's step to the crease. Good night. Yeah. Greetings, Roger Harper. Good to have you here. Good evening. Thanks for having me, Cleverly. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Uh, and I must say, it's good to have a former selector here with us. Just looking at the West Indies squad, having someone with, with your, your nose is, is very much good for what we are trying to trying to look at here. I will try and pick your brain a little bit in, in all that all that concerned the selection of the team recently. Um if we should look at the squad and um, first give me your take, your take on the on the West Indies squad. I think it's a pretty good squad. You have a lot of highly experienced T20 players. Guys who've been playing, playing their trade in T20 cricket all around the world, have been playing for a while. Um, very few uh, players who are young in T20 cricket are in that squad. So I think from an experience factor, you know, it's it, it, it's well covered. Also, um, you know, it's a very explosive um, batting lineup, yeah, so to speak. And I think the challenge is going to be deciding on who plays on a match-by-match -match basis. And I, mm -hmm. I would like to think that um, that might be determined a bit by the opposition that you're playing against and some of the venues, you know, because um, you have, you know, a lot of players there who will each be competing for a spot in that final eleven. Yeah, I, I would want, at some point, I'll ask you about possibly playing eleven, But, but let, let's just look a little bit deeper because when we look at the squad, I think it was... We, we kind of knew the the players who would be in the squad for the most part. Maybe, you know, 12, 13 who were sure to be in the squad. Um, all things being equal. If we should look at maybe the two, like the likes of Shimon Hetmeyer and Shamar jo Joseph, I think are the two that came into the squad and, you know, there, there, there was some discussion along that. Um, let me get your take on it as a former selector. Um, Shimon Hetmeyer and Shamar Joseph getting into the squad. Well, let's look at Shumar Joseph. I think he's the X Factor. He burst onto the scene with his performance in the test matches in Australia. And he's shown that he's capable of taking wickets. Now, he's the player there who hasn't got a lot of um, T20 experience. But I think that um, the coach feels that he can play a part. You know, and they'll have to decide how they use him and when they use him. But certainly his pace can be a factor. Chevron Hetmeyer. Yes, I think uh, some people were surprised by his selection, but I think that his performance uh, in the early part in India, I think his performances have, and we know his ability, have led to him being drafted into the squad. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's good to see the, the talent available and, and the players in the squad. But if we should look maybe a little bit closer at the balance of the team um, and strength of, of the team in different areas, um, just now we had Obed McCoy on the screen, on screen there. Um, Obed McCoy not being in the squad, I think that's something I want to pick your brain a little bit on is the fact that West Indies is, I think, among these full member nations, West Indies ranked ninth 
um, in terms of depth over bowling. So it is a, a concerning area for West Indies, not having a bit McCoy. I know the likes of Andre Russell bowling well and so on. But, but what do you think about the balance of the squad um, with what is there? I don't want to focus too much on what's not there. I know a bit McCoy maybe is a death over specialist. But um, what do you think about that? Yeah. Well, it's, it is what we have to work with what's there and, and who's not, and you can't focus on who's not there. Um, in terms of the strength of the team, we uh, I've heard persons saying that, you know, bowling can be a factor in terms of, So let me know what you think the weaknesses are or the, the major weakness and the, and the major strength is or strengths are for the team. Well, I think no doubt the, 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 the strength of this team will be its explosive batting lineup. However, however, you still the, the lineup still has to put it together and has to work for each other and with each other and complement each other and not necessarily compete with each other. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting to see who bats at number three in the in the batting lineup. I think that number three spot look, looks like Nicholas Puran will take that spot. Um, so let's see, he's an explosive batter. And as you said, the balance is key because he kind of all explosive uh, and not batting sensibly through throughout the entire 20 overs. Um, in terms of the in terms of the weakness, where do you see the weakness for maybe for a uh, possible weakness for the spot? Well, I, I I I would say that we touched on it earlier, the death bowling. I would <laughs> mm -hmm. say that it is not a uh the greatest strength of the team. Let me put it that way. <laughs> but um <laughs> You know, and I think we need to be a little more consistent with our dead bowling and also make smarter decisions as well. Yeah. And then if we should look at maybe the potential game changers for the team, we have a lot of big names, a lot of explosiveness, you know, superstars. But in terms of possible game changers, um, standout player, key players, do you think, for the team? Well, playing at their best, you have Nicholas Puran, uh, Andre Russell, they was, you know, Rothman Powell is no slouch, you know, Sherman Hetmeyer gets going, he can be a game changer as well. But do not underrate players like uh, like Johnson Charles and Brandon King, you know, who I think will be at the top of the order. Also, you also in that in that um, squad, you have player like um, Sherfin Rutherford. Yes. You know. You have players like Romario Shepard on their day, they can be match winners. Yeah. So we have we have I think we have a really good squad. And if, as you said, if they play for each other and not compete against each other, I think that is the standout thing that you you have said and um, that I would take away from from dissecting dissecting the squad. Before we move on from the squad. Um, per se, is there anything else about the squad maybe that you'd want to just touch on before we look at your possibly possible um, playing eleven, starting eleven? Well, I think um, when you look at the squad, you'll see that uh, we have two left arm spinners and uh, a right arm off spinner. That's the spin department, mm -hmm. and I think that. Um, People have been asking about a, a leg spinner, but the, the, the question is, is there a leg spinner deserving of selection that can really compete with the, the spinners in that squad? And I think um, both Moti and Hussein have acquitted themselves very well when they've been given the opportunity. Yes, indeed they have. All right. Um, let's just look at your possible start in 11 before we, before we, we, we look at that South Africa series coming up and, and what to expect. Uh, that's starting 11 that is a that is a real challenge you see um that is a real challenge and as i said earlier as i alluded to earlier i think the team is going to be picked based on the opposition determining whether you want to go with an extra left hand uh, left-handed batter or you know you think you can squeeze in the the, the the right hand especially at the start of the the tournament when you're looking to see who's getting off well but certainly i think that uh that Charles and King would be at the top of the order there. And like I said, the question is who will bat at number three? If you have Puran, I think, you know, you look at somebody like Chase, who I would look at as a floater mm -hmm. at number, uh, who's a possibility. But then also you have um, 
Yeah, but like, like okay. Shy Hope. Yeah. But what you have to consider as well is that um, Chase will squeeze in there for his bowling as well, mm -hmm. right? The, the bowling that he brings to the team, uh, you know, he, he will squeeze in as well. But you have um, Rothman Powell, Hetmeyer, and um, Andre Russell. I think I don't know how many players did I did I name there. You name one, two, three, four, five, six. I didn't take chasers yet. You said it's possibly a four float up, so it would be between maybe him and Shim and Hetmeyer, the team. No, it was between him and Hope. Who oh, chase? Uh, yeah. But what's up? Chasing your starting eleven. Well, I I I think that um you probably. Depending on the opposition, like I said, depending on whether you want to have the the extra spinner or you want to have that Seymour, determine whether he he plays or not, and like, then the role like he can play. You see, I think we needed a floater at number four so that if um, you lose a couple of early wickets, somebody who can hold the innings together up the top, go up there and hold the innings together a bit, and hand over to the explosive players later on. If things are going well from the start and the guys are firing and coming, then the, that player will drop down the order. Yeah. Right? So, but certainly um, your, your bowlers will be, your, your pacers will be, I wouldn't start with um, with Shamar, but I will, you know, you have Alzari. Okay. So your and, team bowlers will be Alzari, Romario Shepard. Shepard. Mm -hmm. And, um, you have That's Russell in there. the squad there yeah. as well. Would right? Holder be starting for you? Sorry? Jason Holder, would he be starting for you? Well, I think we will play the left arm spinner. Certainly okay. one of them will play. Akil Hussein. You know, and I would give, uh... Sorry? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, nine, eight, nine, eight, nine, eight. So you still have place. I still... Oh, Shea Hope. You had Hope in your starting 11? Yeah. I think. So far, I have Rodman Powell, Brandon King, Johnson Charles, Puran, Petmeyer, Chase Russell, Mario Shepard, Akil Sain, and Azari Joseph for you. So. So there's still a spot for Shea Hope. Um, Sheriff in order for Jason Holder, Berekesh Modi, and Shamari Joseph. It's still one spot. Are, are, are you telling Mr. Harper that your, your squad is so strong you can still win the match? <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not telling you that, but it's a, you know, it's, it's a difficult right. choice. It's All right, I, I guess we, we, but, we will um, get... And even with the left arm spinner, it's a toss up with, with, with Hussein and, um, uh, and Moti. And Moti. I think. You know, again, if you look at the roles you want them to play, if you're looking for somebody who can bowl a bit at the start of the innings, you know, yeah. Hussein will get the nod there. If you're looking for somebody who will bowl more in the middle of the uh, of the innings and sort of pull things back, Moti will will, will be your man. Okay. Right. So, um, yes, but um, maybe 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 Jason Holder will start as the experienced player to okay. start the um the tournament. And they take it from there. All right. So, from what I gather, we have so much firepower, we have so much experience, and um, we should do well. And and to, to use your words again, as long as they play for each other and not against each other and not compete with each other, I should say, we should we should be do well. Let's segue a little bit now into the the group previewing the group for for the World Cup. Now. I don't know how well you know the teams. Um, we know the likes of Uganda and, and Papua New Guinea. It is difficult to, to, to say we know the teams. But let's just look at the teams that are in the group. Group C with West Indies, Afghanistan, Uganda, and Papua New Guinea. Um, Papua New Guinea, first time playing in, in the World Cup. But what is your take on, the, on that group um, that West Indies find themselves in? Well, I think that... Um... You know, the teams that you will really feel that will challenge West Indies uh, uh, New Zealand and Afghanistan. However, yeah. 
you know, you learn from, you know, the past that as far as T20 cricket goes, you can't mm-hmm. underrate anyone. So, you know, you have to be at the top of the game, even if you're playing uh, Uganda and Papua New Guinea. And actually, those games, I think we should be looking at it as a way of, as an opportunity for us to go and really build some confidence and perform to our best. Our batsmen should be looking to really score big. And bowlers yeah. looking to, to, to knock them over. But um, New Zealand and Afghanistan are going to be the two tough teams in in that group. And they're pretty good um, T20 teams also. Yeah, and when we look at um, Afghanistan and New Zealand, they are, they are playing good cricket. We will be playing um, Uganda and Papua New Guinea first from what I, what I saw in terms of the fixture. That would give us, as you said, chance for building confidence when you get to the likes of New Zealand and Afghanistan who have players playing in all the leagues around the world who are stronger countries um, in terms of um, ICC rankings. Let's look at those two teams um, closer because they pose a real threat. Let's start with Afghanistan. Wonderful squad really see cricket growing in Afghanistan in recent times. They really are giving up, putting up a good fight with, with the big boys now at the t- same table as, as some of the big boys, I would say. And a world-class player in a superstar. Let me not just say a world-class player. A T20 superstar legend in Rashid Khan leading them, leading that side. What, how do you think West Indies will match up against them? I mean, know what they bring, the spin of Afghanistan, possibly looking at four spinners starting, three spinners starting. What do you think? Yes, it's going to be it's going to be challenging, but um, I think if we have good tracks, you know, we're capable of dealing with it. You have uh, Rashid Khan, who's a handful anywhere, good track or not, and um, mm-hmm. I think Mujib. Mujib Rahman, yeah. Yes, he's another difficult customer as well. Left arm wrist spinner that they bought in um, Noor Ahmed. Yes. You could see him starting as well. And you know, Mohamed Nabi, that all. Yes. Spinner. That is fine wine. He's not getting any older. So you possibly could be looking at four spinners um, starting. Um, So I guess, as you said, the track will come in key because if they get um, a favorable track for spin, they will pose a threat to, to, they could pose a threat to West Indies. Players who sometimes a few players have struggled, struggled a few times to play spin. Well, I think they're going to be a, 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 a challenging team regardless of the conditions, but they're going to be more difficult to deal with, you know, if the spinners get a surface that assists them. You know, but um, at the same time, I think we have um, batsmen who, when they put their heads down, are pretty good players of spin as well. So, you know, we'll have to look at the um, that's how we go about it. Yeah, and and gone are the days um, when they ju- when they when they started their rise. People would say, "Oh, they don't have the batting to support it," but they get going along with with Mohamed Nabi. So it's a real formidable unit, and and we can't we, even though we talk about their spin, we can't not look at Fazalak Faruqi, who comes on with that new ball. He can really be a a, a handful. So we're standing, as you said earlier have to be on top of their game when playing against these these guys yes um you know they've got good depth all around and like you pointed out they're pretty experienced as well and i think they they back themselves they back themselves especially in this format of the game yeah yeah all right let's look now at new zealand this is a team who sometimes you will because i guess and a lot of people say because they are so, so nice people. Sometimes you, you don't even pay keen attention to them. They are not like the Australians who are in your face, to be honest. But then, if you look at, they've been real formidable, make, getting into finals and, and, and um, playoff positions. I think sometimes they just creep upon you, you don't even see it. Um, so, this is a team that we can't take lightly. It's very strong. Really, some big players are um, playing in T20 leagues, big T20 leagues, experience all around. Uh, so tell me, what what your take on it um, in West Indies, trying to knock them over and, and finish top of the group? Well, like you said about New Zealand, it's not a team that's in your face, but you know, they just keep 
on keeping on. They don't make too much of a fuss, but they just go about their business. And, you know, they're very structured and systematic in their in their approach. Um, yes, they're, they're going to be a team that, you know, you, you really have to play well against because they've got um, explosive batting. You know, yeah. Phillips, Glenn Phillips, yeah. um, Conway, um, Mitchell, yeah. you know, those guys. Finn Allen, if he opens the innings, oh my. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I think, you know, we, we, we will have from ball yeah. one. Yeah, and we, and we know what, and, and what, some, one of the things I've always say because they're not in your face, as, as you say, in terms of they do the basics well. And they make sure they, they so in the field they'll be they'll be aggressive but not in your face they're aggressive to the ball right and they do the basics well they'll still just by how aggressive they they, they they get to the they feel um when you look at your bowling the likes of and you know their spinners will will come to the party the likes of um mitchell sapner and um, isoli especially in our conditions they, they we've seen them in the past in these conditions do exceptionally well in the cpl as well do well um then phillips played for um the talawa franchise for years and really put up some good numbers so i uh, i think we know them in this region and what they can do and we can't we can't take them lightly because and ken williams as a leader oh my he is a hell of a leader yes and do not underrate uh, glenn phillips's bowling because that has come to the fore yeah, yeah. as well but um yes mm -hmm. i think um kane kane leads from the front and that's all you can ask yeah terrific leader and as you said glenn phillips he's he's a gun fielder he he's a wicked keeper he's a batter and we're in bowling this guy is bowling in the power play he's bowling in the middle overs and he's just doing everything everything for, for that squad so I think that with Glenn Phillips is like you're playing with 12. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so so we see we see how, how the group pans out and, and the teams that are that, that would be in the group. Just a little touch on Uganda and Papua New Guinea in terms of what they will bring. Um and as you, you said earlier that they can spring a surprise and we can't take them for granted. I think Papua New Guinea as well coming from a region that is in the indo-pacific there's a cricket loving region um you don't know what you're coming with but just believe these countries always come with some sort of quality because you have people who have connections with india and maybe would have gone over and so on and so do you think they will come with some other quality that maybe will not look at people maybe sleeping on them a bit well well of course and i think they may have some um some like you said some of the indian players who may have uh, been living over there for a while who are now uh, citizens of uh, of a place like papua new guinea who might be representing them but who knows but um i think the fact that they're in the world cup means that they must have some quality about them and, and yeah. uh, not to be underrated yeah and and, and uganda as well as you said in terms of qualifying um qualifying to the World Cup, they they have some quality because they would have had to beat some teams to get there. So I suspect they will be coming and they'll. And sometimes when you're excited about being there and you play with such freedom, because let's face it, the whole world will be looking and saying, "Well, you don't expect them to get out of the group." But then that that freedom, there's no pressure on them. They'll just come and play cricket, just to have fun, and being in the Caribbean where it, you know it is maybe one of the, the, the most fun places in the world. Um, you can just come and express yourself and it might just bring a surprise. So I think we have to be, be, be wary of that. You see, I think a team like that would go into the tournament not thinking necessarily of getting to the next round, mm -hmm. but trying to win each game. Yeah. Right? To try and see if they can win a game. The first game, they'll try to win that. The next game, they'll try to win that. And then the next game, they'll try to win that as well. So, you know, they can be pretty dangerous. Playing with, a, with with freedom, with confidence and determination, you know, they're not to be underrated. All right. Last thing I really want to touch on. <laughs> let's let's let last set of things I want to look at. In terms of crucial matches for West Indies, you said that 
we want to get those points from from Papua New Guinea and Uganda in starting, and that will give us confidence for the next two games. Now let's let let me just go tell you to take your West Indies hat off and give me an objective view now as to the two teams that you think will advance um, from this group. If it's two to advance. Well, I thought I was being objective all night. <laughs> <laughs> but I know you're um, objective, but you're a West Indian, so I, and I just took my hat off too. So <laughs> it's down, it's down to to how well you play. I think uh, Wesley's has a good enough squad to come out of that group, and I think um, getting the the points from from Papua New Guinea and uh, Uganda okay. early then will set you up for winning, you know, against New Zealand and Afghanistan. So that has got to be the approach. Make sure you win those games against Uganda and Papua New Guinea. And then try and take care of New Zealand and Afghanistan. You know, winning one of those games will guarantee you a place in the yeah. next round. So I'm hearing, I'm hearing West Indies will qualify. Who's the next team you have will qualify from the group? Well, New Zealand has a way of going forward. Yeah. New Zealand has a way of going forward. So I do I wouldn't write them off. You know, you you never name them as a favorite for any tournament. But coming down to the end of the tournament, you look and you see them there. You know, <laughs> so I wouldn't write off New Zealand at all. All right. So so there you have it. New Zealand and West Indies expected get out of the, that group um which will feature the likes of afghanistan all right and that's the final over for today today's at the wicket we've unpacked west indies squad prepped for the south african challenge and and scoped out all all things relating to the group t clash of titans remember it is not just cricket is not just a game it is a battle of skills will and trills join us next time as we continue to chase excitement and drama of the t20 world cup until then keep your eyes on the ball and your passion for the game alive goodbye and thank you for joining us thank you my pleasure